Okay, so um, the improvements I am going to talk about might be even uh, unnoticed by many Zabbix users, uh, since they come down not to new features uh, or some aspects of the user interface experience, but rather scalability. Uh, but that means uh, they might be significantly beneficial for those Zabbix users who run really large installations. So uh, first of all, I will be talking about a new internal Zabbix processors, which help us achieve better scalability, some new configuration parameters. And I will tell about how Zabbix can handle more data now. So um, what were the goals of this uh, new scalability improvement? Uh, it's uh, possibly quite true that in the case of a large installations, uh, the main performance bottleneck would be the database. And Zabbix already uses only persistent connections to the database and doesn't use any ad hoc connections. But with uh, 5.4, uh, the use of database connection has been further drastically optimized. So first and foremost, let's talk about uh, how this uh, has been achieved. So uh, in the past, in earlier versions, not only database syncers, but also pollers and some other processes of Zabbix were having a dedicated persistent connection to the database. So uh, what they were used for? They were necessary for calculated items and aggregate checks. And since uh, these calculated items and aggregate checks are not real items, uh, they're based on the queries to the database and particular history tables. And also, uh, this was necessary to update host availability status and uh, all kinds of pollers, that is, uh, pollers, unreachable pollers, JMX pollers, and also the API manager. Uh, they would update host availability directly in the database. And also, in some cases, when proxies are used, and that's true for many large installations, uh, host availability would be also updated by the proxy poller. Uh, in case of uh, passive proxies and trapper. So uh, why it was decided to avoid these connections in Zabbix 5.4? First of all, uh, they don't really work well with the default database configuration. Uh, for example, PostgreSQL, Oracle, uh, in many database servers, for example, in PostgreSQL, max connections is set to 100 by default. And I'll tell a, bit, a little bit in more details about that in my next slides. It also can cause uh, some locking on the database size. It also is, uh, it results in inefficient memory and CPU utilization. And also uh, before Zabbix 5.4, it was really impossible to perfectly fine tune the number of connections to the database. So um, this two new processes. Since Zabbix 5.4, we have history pollers and availability manager. And if you uh, have upgraded your Zabbix instance already, if you log into your server and run PS uh, and grab it by Zabbix underscore server, you will notice these new processes. So by default, you have, have hit five history pollers and availability manager. So history pollers. As I told earlier, since uh, calculated items and aggregate checks represent uh, a different type of items, now they have their own polar. That's history polar. So that's what it's used for. Uh, it also comes uh, with a new configuration parameter. And uh, you should keep in mind that uh, more is not always better. And uh, you should only increase uh, that value, how many uh, history polars are being preforked, only if they are too busy according to internal self-monitoring. But it, keep it as low as possible. Uh, next, let's talk about availability manager. So as I told, all kinds of pollers were updating host availability directly in the database, and that was uh, causing many more transactions. And now uh, we have this separate availability manager, and all processes, that means uh, pollers, trappers, uh, they uh, communicate to the availability manager, and once every five seconds, it will flush uh, the statistics uh, to the database. Uh, next, very important thing that comes down to database uh, connection optimi optimizations. Uh, 
So uh, since Zabbix 5.2, they have new trigger functions like trend average, trend max, etc. And they were introduced uh, to operate on trends data for really long periods of time. And similarly to calculated uh, items, these triggers use database queries to obtain uh, necessary data. Uh, and in 5.4, we have now finally trend cache. It stores all results of uh, calculated trend functions in the memory. If a value for some reason is not yet in the cache, it will be uh, queried from the database and stored in the cache. And as with uh, all new introduced processes, uh, it's, their effectiveness can be monitored using internal checks, and you can rely on these internal checks to set the relevant trend function cache size parameter value. So here it is. Um, so what we have with all those database-related optimizations, like kind of summary. Now it's possible to have as many database connections as you need. And let me explain more about this uh, point. For example, you operate uh, a very large installations and you uh, need let's say hundreds or maybe even more polars. And at the same time, you don't really rely much on some calculated items or aggregate checks functionality. But before Zapix 5.4, um, you would end up with hundreds or more database connections, which you don't really need. And moreover, uh, if, for example, you use PostgreSQL uh, with uh, default configuration, um, after you increase the number of followers, you might have noticed that uh, your database server will go down and also will bring down your Zabbix instance. And also for each um, PostgreSQL worker process, you would have limited uh, work map because uh, you have too many database connections and uh, your overall database performance would be sacrificed. And that is not the case anymore. Um, and also, if you're using uh, trend functions with triggers for large periods of time, uh, you may have noticed some things like slow queries in the past, which were resulted by this. But now uh, the uh, load on the database is seriously decreased. Uh, and one more important uh, question, uh, which Alexei has referred earlier to as a graceful stat. Uh, you know, active proxies can keep uh, a backlog, and that's very useful uh, for some scenarios where uh, the communication between uh, the server and the proxy can break for some reason. That can be different scenarios. Like, for example, as Alex mentioned, it could be some server maintenance, for example, you are upgrading to a uh, next minor release. Or, for example, you are using proxies because you have some uh, remote uh, site remote facility uh, and, um, for example, that remote site has lost the internet access for some reason, like fiber cuts or something like that. And when communication restores, the proxies can uh, sometimes easily overload the server in large installations, uh, especially if you had a long downtime. And so now, uh, since Zabbix 5 was, several will let the proxies know if it's busy. And the proxies will throttle that ascendant. Uh, and uh, before Zabbix 5.4, uh, there actually was a method to throttle the data upload by the proxies uh, when the history cache is overutilized. And that is uh, when it's uh, equal or greater uh, than uh, 80%. However, the server was responsible for that task. And that basically meant when all proxies uh, were getting disabled in some situations. And that meant not only history upload, but also other tasks like uh, processing regular data and processing tasks uh, would be suspended until the history cache utilization goes less than 80%. Uh, of course, that's not optimal and that is completely not acceptable in large environments. So now the separate trust boxes. And that means that they are responsible for checking whether the server can handle the data, data or not. So now as uh, the scenario after the history cache usage hits 80% uh, would be like this. Proxies send the data to the server and 
that data is accepted. And if server thinks it's uh, busy, it will respond uh, with a special uh, JSON uh, tag in its response uh, and will set the upload tag value to disable. And proxies will stop up uploading history data, but they will keep uh, processing other tags like uh, pulling server for tasks and uploading other data. And after a while, this uh, proxy will upload data again. And server that's already not too busy will respond with uh, the uh, JSON tag upload set to enable. Uh, and uh, um, unlike uh, the previous two improvements I've been talking about, uh, which are um, based on serious architectural changes. This one uh, was backported to earlier five versions, like 5.0 and 5.2. And that's pretty much all. Uh, any questions are welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sergey. Um, okay. Uh, one question, and I think this is quite a common one. Would you recommend using proxies even on the local site, uh, maybe to allow for server to be upgraded without losing data or for performance improvements or something like that? Well, in some cases, uh, there are such installations, and I think it's mostly not due to performance, but due to uh, having everything uh, uh, configured uh, in a unified basis. So if you... Uh, use a lot of proxies, sometimes you uh, would like to uh, uh, monitor all the items with only proxies. And we have uh, many customers using such uh, scenarios in their installations. Mm -hmm. um, one more question. So for throttling, um, this can give you some noticeable performance benefit. Um, from which version, which version is required on the server, on the proxy for, uh, for throttling? Um, these all changes have been reported to earlier versions, so you can use either 5.4.0 that's released recently, or you can use latest uh, uh, releases of 5.0 and 5.2 branches. Mm -hmm. So just yep. use this one. Um, then next up, um, this is maybe not necessarily related to these changes, a general question about performance, maybe you can just share your experience. Is it possible to have two databases in a cluster and point the select queries to one database and, for example, execution queries to another database? Or how would generally database clustering work? Is it of benefit to Zabbix? Can Zabbix utilize it? Well, in general, um, uh, our uh, high availability setups uh, use uh, some uh, basic uh, features which are built in into database servers. So, uh, they use replication and you just use some kind of service that will provide some virtual IP for your cluster and that's completely transparent to Zabbix. Mm -hmm. um, though in, in this scenario, from my experience, if I recall correctly, it is not recommended to split like different queries on different nodes. They should yeah. still hit that one single specific node. Yeah, so it's more of an HA approach rather than a, a vertical, uh, sorry, horizontal scalability approach. Yeah. Um, all right. And a general question I always like to ask, and this is from me, but uh, when we say a large instance, a medium instance, a small instance, can you maybe just from your experience elaborate what would that mean? Like what kind of new values per second should we be looking at and uh, so on? Well, we have a lot of large installations uh, and that, that's mostly our customers, but sometimes we maybe don't even know of some larger installations if they are managed by the users themselves. But uh, it's quite common to have uh, some installations that have, for example, let's say, 100k uh, uh, NVPS and even more. And uh, I, I think Alexei was given some impressive uh, example in, in his speech. And uh, sometimes uh, if we are talking about the database sizes, we sometimes are creating really large installations that have, for example, uh, dozens of terabytes in their database. Some users would like to keep really a long uh, uh, record of uh, history. But what would you, from your experience, consider a large, large instance, like 20,000 new values per second, 10,000 new values per second? I, I think in my experience, uh, installations like uh, several dozens of uh, thousands of NVPS are quite common. That we see that on a regular daily basis. Mm -hmm. So yeah, somewhere I think probably 20, 30, 40,000 upwards, that would be like a, a decently large, large installation that could benefit a lot from, from these changes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Um, thank you a lot, uh, Sergey.